The recent U.S. declaration labeling Niger's military takeover as a coup had significant ramifications, particularly in terms of aid provisions and diplomatic relations. According to the U.S. Constitution, the country is prohibited from establishing ties with or providing aid to a country following a coup. As a result, the United States halted $500 million in aid to Niger. This decision, however, raised concerns about the timing of the declaration and its motivations. Speculations arose about France's potential influence, which could prompt U.S. action. However, this action jeopardized the U.S. military presence and drone operations in Niger. The quandary arose as the U.S. attempted to navigate the suspension of aid while maintaining a strategic foothold in Niger. Earlier reports suggested that the U.S. might withdraw from Niger, abandoning its drone base and severing ties. Recent events in the United States, however, indicated a shift in this narrative, implying a potential shift in the previously anticipated course of action regarding the country's involvement in Niger. This shift in stance indicated a potential revaluation of the United States' strategy in the region, sparking speculation and debate about the future trajectory of the United States' presence in Niger and the broader geopolitical implications of such decisions. The Senate hearing revealed a lot about what the elites in the United States are thinking. Senator Rand Paul introduced a resolution in the Senate ordering Biden to withdraw U.S. troops from Niger. However, the outcome of the vote on this resolution stunned everyone, revealing what the U.S. is seriously considering doing with Niger. So, what happened in the Senate, and how is the United States planning to attack Niger? Let's find out more in this video. Recently, the United States Senate rejected Senator Rand Paul's proposal to withdraw from the United States. Without explicit congressional authorization, the U.S. had over 100,000 troops in Niger, making it the second largest military presence on the continent. Senator Paul criticized President Biden before the vote for relying on post-9 elephants war powers to justify the troop presence in Niger, claiming that it was irrelevant to the situation in Africa. Despite the recent coup, the Senate's rejection of the legislation by a vote of 86 to 11 indicates that U.S. military imperialism continues in Niger. Despite the fact that the United States formally declared a military coup in Niger earlier this month, resulting in the suspension of official assistance, the U.S. without explicit congressional authorization, the U.S. had over 100,000 troops in Niger, making it the second largest military presence on the continent. Senator Paul criticized President Biden before the vote for relying on post-9 elephants war powers to justify the troop presence in Niger, claiming that it was irrelevant to the situation in Africa. Despite the recent coup, the Senate's rejection of the legislation by a vote of 86 to 11 indicates that U.S. military imperialism continues in Niger. Despite the fact that the United States formally declared a military coup in Niger earlier this month, resulting in the suspension of official assistance, the U.S. in response, Senator Ben Cardin, the Democratic chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, warned that a sudden withdrawal could create a vacuum that Russia or its partner, Wagner mercenaries, could fill. You can see how hypocritical they are. On the one hand, the United States refers to it as a Niger coup, while on the other, it pretends to be concerned about the security situation. Senator Cardin emphasized the importance of paying more attention to the region and avoiding signals of abandonment. But in reality, it is the United States that does not want to be kicked out. Over the last decade, U.S. troops have been involved in counterterrorism training for Nigerian forces, as well as operating military bases and conducting drone missions. However, these missions have benefited the United States more than Niger, providing valuable intelligence about the continent. The United States formally acknowledged a military coup in Niger earlier this month, resulting in the suspension of official assistance. Despite this acknowledgement, U.S. officials have stated that they have no plans to reduce the U.S. troop presence in the country. That part of the world receives insufficient attention. We don't want to send the message that we're abandoning that part of the world, said Cardin. Look at how they discuss Africa and its countries. They believe they have a right to be there and maintain a military presence because their Senate makes decisions on these issues. But the reality is that issues like these should be debated in Niger about whether the U.S. weather troops should be kicked out of the country is debatable. However, this contradicts what the United States did previously.
The United States officially recognized the July military takeover in Niger as a coup, a decision that limits the United States' ability to intervene. According to a report, military assistance and collaboration with a country considered a critical counterterrorism ally in the region, a senior Biden administration official. We are taking this action because we have exhausted all available avenues to maintain constitutional order in Niger over the last two months, the official explained to reporters on Tuesday. However, the available options focused on ensuring Mohamed Bazoum's return to the presidency rather than resolving issues. The Niger military junta was not in the mood to take such direct orders. As a result, the U.S. tried blackmailing the junta this way, threatening to cut off aid. When the Niger military junta paid no attention, the U.S. used the only option it had, which was just to end the aid. The official mentioned that the U.S had urged the military leaders responsible for forcibly deposing the president to restore a civilian and democratic government within the 90 to 120 day period prescribed by Niger's constitution. These constitutional guidelines, however, were not followed by military officials. In fact, they've told us that they've decided to repeal the constitution and are now working on a new draft with an uncertain timeline, according to the official. Currently, the U.S. Embassy can continue to operate, and the U.S. According to administration officials, the military has decided to keep forces in Niger. However, the U.S. is not participating in any partner missions or training with Nigerian forces, as has been the case since the coup in late July. Approximately 1,000 U.S. personnel are still stationed in the country, but decisions on their continued presence have yet to be made. The officials stated that intelligence, reconnaissance, and surveillance operations using U.S. drones are ongoing, with the activities focusing on monitoring for threats to our forces, including threats from violent extremist organizations. Concerns have been expressed by current and former U.S. according to officials, limited intelligence, reconnaissance, and surveillance efforts may stymie international efforts to assist local security forces in combating terrorist organizations. Niger has long been regarded as a hub for West African counterterrorism operations, with the U.S. millions of dollars were invested in a new drone base in Agadez, Niger, which began operations in 2019. According to the French Armed Forces Ministry, France initiated the withdrawal of its 1,500 troops from Niger and ended its cooperation with Niger's military in response to the coup. The French ambassador has also left the country. When the Biden administration formally designated the July military takeover in Niger as a coup, it gave Washington the authority to impose restrictions on most forms of U.S. assistance to the Nigerian government. A total of $200 million in U.S. aid, which had been on hold since August, has now been reinstated. According to State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller, any resumption of U.S. To usher in democratic governance in a timely and credible manner, assistance will necessitate military action. When the coup was officially recognized, U.S. officers began spreading rumors about the U.S. The withdrawal of troops from Niger. The U.S. began considering troop withdrawal from Niger in recent weeks, signaling a significant shift in American military presence following the coup. Two U.S. officials have suggested that up to half of the 1,500 troops stationed in Niger be withdrawn. However, no final decision had been made, and the exact number of troops to be withdrawn was unknown. Since the military coup, the United States has maintained a military presence in Niger, with troops stationed at two airbases and the embassy in Niamey. According to three U.S. officials, the relocation of troops from Airbase 101 near Niamey to Airbase 201 near Agadez was motivated by a capacity issue. Despite the Pentagon's announcement regarding troop relocation, the smaller capacity of Air Base 201, which operates drones, poses challenges, potentially leading to the departure of some troops from the country. According to one official, the withdrawal of troops could begin in the coming weeks, depending on the situation on the ground. Nonetheless, the Pentagon's goal in Niger is to maintain a military presence for as long as possible. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos about black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let us now proceed. According to reports,
the Biden administration has been looking into ways to keep U.S. forces and assets in Niger for anti-terror operations, despite the country's uncertain political situation. Non-essential personnel and contractors are scheduled to leave, and the relocation of some troops has been coordinated with the Nigerian military. The United States government emphasizes that there is no immediate threat to American personnel or violence on the ground. Nonetheless, it was reported that the United States military was preparing for the worst-case scenario, which included evacuation from Niger. Preparations for a possible U.S. military evacuation from Niger were underway, despite the fact that a senior U.S. general indicated that a final decision was still weeks away. On Friday, during a virtual briefing with members of the Defense Writers Group, General James Hecker, the commander of U.S. Air Forces Europe and U.S. Air Forces Africa, told reporters that his headquarters had been preparing for various scenarios that could have forced around 1,000 100 U.S. troops to leave two vital U.S. air bases. Counterterrorism efforts. He stated that U.S. troops were prepared to leave Niger if something went wrong. He also stated that there were numerous hypotheses they could consider as to why and if the U.S. should leave. The United States simply had to be prepared for all of them. For weeks, U.S. officials have warned that if the military officials who ousted Manchurian President Mohamed Bouzem last month fail to reinstate him, Washington may withdraw its support for Niger. Despite these warnings, the U.S. has refrained from labeling the situation in Niger a coup, which could have serious consequences for the existing military partnership. 201 Air Base, a U.S. since 2019, the $110 million facility has played an important role in the counterterrorism mission, conducting drone flights with MQ-9 Reapers. General Hecker emphasized that the preparations for an evacuation from the two bases were prudent and precautionary. His teams had considered scenarios in which they might be forced to evacuate civilians and even the U.S. Embassy. There were also ongoing preparations for possible alternative bases for the United States. In case they needed to leave Niger, they had access to air assets. General Hecker stated that we would have obviously looked for other allies in West Africa with whom we could possibly partner and then move our assets. We had only begun to consider where we wanted the base to be. Decisions on alternative bases would be more diplomatic and coordinated through the State Department, he added. That, you see, is the mentality of the United States. It wants a military presence in Africa, regardless of which country we're talking about. It can conduct surveillance missions using its drone bases, gathering intelligence that gives it an advantage. This intelligence is more valuable than gold and diamonds to the United States and the world at large. The evacuation plan became more intense later on. The United States announced that it was preparing plans to evacuate drone bases under Niger's new junta, if necessary. According to statements made by Air Force General James Hecker, the commander for Africa, the U.S. was taking precautionary measures to plan for a potential evacuation of two vital drone and counterterrorism bases in Niger, if deemed necessary under the new junta in the West African nation. It revealed two facts. One reason is that the United States was not in the mood to leave. Second, the evacuation plan was contingent on what the Niger military ordered Hunta. The United States also began preparing plans to find alternatives, including exploring potential alliances with the United States, friendly nations in the Sahara and Sahel regions, which are the most active areas for extremist groups. Hecker clarified that the Biden administration has not yet decided whether the military overthrow of Niger's democratically elected president on July 26 will result in the evacuation of U.S. troops, diplomats or security forces from the country. Bases in Niger, located in Niamey, the capital, and the remote city of Agadez on the southern edge of the Sahara, have played a critical role in counterterrorism efforts in an unstable region witnessing an increase in an encroachment by Russia's Wagner mercenary group. Hecker acknowledged that if U.S. forces were to leave, whether due to an administration decision or junta orders, it would have ramifications for U.S. intelligence and counterterrorism efforts. Nonetheless, he hoped for a peaceful diplomatic solution to avert this situation. Hecker did not provide specifics on alternative West African counterterrorism posts under consideration, emphasizing that diplomatic considerations would be important in determining the location.
Hackers' precautionary evacuation planning includes several scenarios, including a leisurely move out and a quick departure, with a focus on transporting only the most sensitive material. Later, as the Pentagon reported repositioning troops and military equipment within Niger, these reports appeared credible. Hecker acknowledged that if U.S. forces were to leave, whether due to an administration decision or junta orders, it would have ramifications for U.S. intelligence and counterterrorism efforts. Nonetheless, he hoped for a peaceful diplomatic solution to avert this situation. Hecker did not provide specifics on alternative West African counterterrorism posts under consideration, emphasizing that diplomatic considerations would be important in determining the location. Hecker's precautionary evacuation planning includes several scenarios, including a leisurely move out and a quick departure, with a focus on transporting only the most sensitive material. Later, as the Pentagon reported repositioning troops and military equipment within Niger, these reports appeared credible. Despite suspending these missions since the coup, the United States has maintained a military presence in the Central African country until now. The official emphasized that this relocation was carried out with extreme caution and does not represent a significant change in the country's overall military personnel. However, it did send the message that the coup was intended to avoid any confrontation. The relocation of troops and equipment between the two bases, which are over 450 miles apart, was coordinated in collaboration with the Nigerian military. While the United States had previously conducted extensive training and exercises with the Nigerian military, such cooperation has since been halted following the coup. But then we got some bad news. According to reports, the U.S. military has resumed drone and crewed aircraft operations in post-coup Niger. Earlier, the U.S. military faced the prospect of losing a significant drone base in Agadez, Niger, in the aftermath of the coup. Originally designed in 2014 for surveillance drones, the base has evolved over time and now houses armored Reaper drones and is Africa's largest facility. The previous government's 10-year UCG agreement expired next year, and relations under the new regime have shifted, with Niger aligning itself with Moscow and severing ties with France. The Agades drone base, officially known as Nigerian Air Base 201, was critical to the U.S. military's expanded presence in Africa, representing the most extensive base-building effort ever undertaken by the U.S. Air Force. Due to the lack of existing facilities, Agades required the construction of comprehensive infrastructure from the ground up, making it the largest airman-built initiative in U.S. Air Force history. Beyond its operational center, the base includes well-equipped facilities similar to those found on typical U.S. installations, as well as recreational amenities and lodging for its personnel. It is now clear that the United States will not abandon Niger on its own. The U.S. Senate has made it clear that it does not want U.S. troops to leave Niger. The apparent inconsistency in the United States' decision to halt aid to Niger following the coup while maintaining a military presence in the country is a sophisticated strategic move. This action clearly shows the United States disrespecting not only its Congress, but also democratic principles. In terms of promoting democracy versus security interests, the suspension of aid is consistent with the United States' long-standing commitment to advancing democracy around the world. When a coup destabilizes a democratically elected government, the U.S. clearly signals that it values democratic ideals. However, if democratic principles are upheld, why not evacuate a country affected by a coup? If the coup is the issue, why doesn't the U.S. send its troops back? That is the hypocrisy that the Niger military junta will deal with right now. The former aligns with the United States in the balancing act between aid suspension and military presence. Rhetoric in support of democratic norms, demonstrating a willingness to oppose undemocratic power shifts. The latter, retaining a military presence, emphasizes the United States' practice of maintaining a military presence regardless of what happens. This, however, will not continue. Since the United States has exhausted its only leverage against the Niger military junta, it is now Niger's turn to respond. The United States could only suspend aid to Niger, which it has already done. However, Niger's military junta is still holding powerful cards, one of which is the threat to order U.S. troops to leave the country. The military junta in Niger is more powerful than the United States believes, 
and it has already ordered high-ranking UN officials are being asked to leave the country. This demonstrates that it will not be afraid to do the same with U.S. troops and take over the two bases the U.S. has in the country. So, even if the United States Senate has done what it wants by rejecting the resolution to recall troops from Niger, power remains with Niger's military junta. They are currently planning to ask the U.S. to leave, which is why we saw U.S. troops being released. Earlier, I redeployed and repositioned. Nonetheless, this has largely exposed the hypocrisy of the United States. It has demonstrated its intent to blackmail Niger by suspending aid and referring to the takeover as a coup. However, when it comes to returning troops and leaving drone bases, the U.S. begins to advocate for African security. What are your thoughts? Isn't it hypocritical for the U.S. to cut aid while maintaining a military presence in Niger? Should the Niger military evict U.S. troops and take over the drone base regardless of what the U.S. Senate decides? Please share your thoughts on the U.S. hypocrisy in all of its actions in Africa. Do you want to see more videos like this one? If so, subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon next to it. We've decided to bring videos about something no one talks about, black culture, civilization, history, and evidence of how glorious blacks have been. Thank you for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.